All right. Uh, good afternoon and happy Friday, everyone. The Secretary General, in press remarks over the past hour, expressed his profound concerns about escalation between Israel and Hezbollah along the Blue Line. He said that the risk for the conflict in the Middle East to widen is real and must be avoided. One rash move, one miscalculation, could trigger a catastrophe that goes far beyond the border and, frankly, beyond imagination, Mr. Guterres warned. He said that people of the region and the people of the world cannot afford Lebanon to become another Gaza. The Secretary General said that the parties must urgently recommit to the full implementation of Security Council Resolution 1701 and immediately return to a cessation of hostilities. Further military escalation will only guarantee more suffering, more devastation to communities in Lebanon and Israel, and potentially, and more potentially catastrophic, uh, catastrophic consequences for the region, he said. He added that UN peacekeepers are on the ground working to de-escalate tensions and help prevent miscalculation in an, an extremely challenging environment. His remarks are online. Turning to Gaza, the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says that the breakdown of public order and safety is increasingly endangering humanitarian workers and operations. Alongside the ongoing fighting, criminal activities and the risk of theft and robbery has effectively prevented humanitarian access to critical locations. For example, since the 18th of June, the UN has not been able to pick up supplies from Kerem Shalom Crossing. With our humanitarian partners and relevant parties, we are working to address the lack of public order and safety, alongside other impediments to a meaningful humanitarian response. As the occupying power, it is incumbent upon the Israeli authorities to restore public order and safety as far as possible and, so, and facilitate safe humanitarian access so that assistance reaches civilians in need. OCHA adds that humanitarian colleagues are working relentlessly to restore key services at health facilities in northern Gaza as the health system struggles to address soaring needs amid a lack of any field hospitals in the area. In central and southern Gaza, where most of Gaza's population is now crammed in dire conditions, only seven hospitals remain functional, all partially, including three in Deir el Bala, four in Khan Yunus, and none in Rafa, alongside eight field hospitals. In addition to the lack of health facilities, our colleagues warned that the volume of medical supplies entering Gaza remains insufficient to sustain the health response. Last week, the World Health Organization delivered its first cargo through the Ashdod port for shipment to Gaza via Kerem Shalom, with enough supplies to cover the health needs of 35,000 people. While this is a welcome development, the supplies are barely a fraction of what's needed to sustain the massive health response. This morning, the Secretary General's Special Representative for Afghanistan, Rosa Utenbaeva, briefed the Security Council on the situation in the country. Ms. Utenbaeva said that over the past weeks, in preparation for the third Doha format meeting, the UN Assistance Mission in Afghanistan has met with hundreds of Afghans, and especially women, around the country. She added that these consultations revealed a broad agreement that it was important for the de facto authorities to attend the meeting, but that, that, that there should be also no recognition of the de facto authorities until the issues of women's rights, girls' education, and an acceptable constitution were broadly addressed. Also briefing council members, Lisa Doughton, the Director of Financing and Partnerships at the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, warned that humanitarian needs in Afghanistan remain alarmingly high. She said that more than 50% of the population, some 23.7 million people, require humanitarian assistance this year, the third highest number of people in need in the world. Both remarks were shared with you, and I also want to flag that Ms. Utenbaeva will speak with you at the Security Council stakeout soon after the end of the Council meeting. That could be actually fairly soon. This weekend, the Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed, will travel to China to co-chair the 15th World Economic Forum Annual Meeting of the New Champions. This meeting will bring together the world's top academics, private sector leaders, youth, and civil society to discuss pressing issues on the global agenda and generate collective insights and solutions. While in China, the Deputy Secretary General will meet with senior government officials and other stakeholders to discuss the acceleration of the Sustainable Development Goals and September's Summit of the Future. Ms. Mohammed will then go to Geneva, Switzerland at the request of the Secretary General to participate in the official celebration of the 60th anniversary of the International Trade Center and meet with senior UN officials. The Deputy, Secretary, the Deputy Secretary General will be back in New York on the 27th of June. 
a high-level UN delegation led by Abdullahi Mardé, the special coordinator for, for development in the Sahel, and Yakub al Hilo, the regional director for Africa at the Development Coordination Office, traveled to Mali from June 18th until today. During their meetings with Mali's Prime Minister, Jogal Maiga, they stressed the UN's commitment to accelerating the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals in essential sectors such as education, health, water, energy, and agriculture to foster resilience and promote long-term stability. Following their visit to Mali, the delegation will continue its mission in the Central Sahel with a stop in Burkina Faso. We have an update from South Sudan. Our peacekeeping colleagues in the country have intensified patrols in Tanj East to address intercommunal violence and restore community confidence as part of their efforts to protect civilians. The mission also continues to engage with community members and leaders, particularly women, to understand their perspectives on the security situation and better tailor their responses. The UN mission notes that the challenges in accessing Tanj East, caused by poor road conditions and heavy rains, often make law enforcement complicated in the area but local authorities are determined to continue providing services to these communities. Separately, the UN mission said that, together with the UN Development Program, it has organized a two-day forum in Yambio for dozens of county commissioners, community leaders, youth, and women representatives from Western Equatoria State to help address persistent, persistent intercommunal conflict and violence. In Nigeria, our team there has launched an emergency response to address the cholera outbreak. Authorities have confirmed over 300 cases in Lagos State alone, with 15 recorded deaths. The UN Children's Fund, the World Health Organization, and the International Organization for Migration are collaborating with authorities to boost information, education, and communication materials to curb the spread of cholera. In Zambia, UNICEF says that almost 52,000 children under the age of five are expected to fall into severe wasting, the deadliest form of malnutrition, within the next 12 months if urgent preventive measures are not put in place. This assessment comes as Zambia grapples with prolonged drought. Children in the western, southern, central, and northwestern provinces, four out of 10 of Zambia's regions, are at particularly high risk of becoming malnourished, as many families already face hunger and are unable to put nutritious food on the table. UNICEF is urging immediate action to ensure food distribution and cash assistance for mothers and children expand healthcare access, and improve health and sanitation services. More information online. And we have an update on the humanitarian situation in Haiti. Our colleagues from the World Food Program tell us that between the 15th and 19th of June, they distributed more than 76,000 meals to over 15,000 displaced people in the capital, Port-au-Prince. Since March 1st, our humanitarian partners have distributed some 21 million liters of drinking water to nearly 90,000 displaced people in the Port-au-Prince area. They also distributed 12,000 hygiene kits and across 36 displacement sites. I'd like to read into the record an announcement that went out earlier this morning about a newly appointed assistant executive director at the World Food Program. The Secretary General, WFP Executive Director Cindy McCain, and the Food and Agriculture Organization Director General Chudon Yu have appointed Stefan Omolo of Kenya as Assistant Executive Director for Workplace and Management at WFP. He succeeds Stanlake Samkange of Zimbabwe, who has served in the role ad interim, and to whom the Secretary General is grateful for his service and dedication to WFP. Mr. Omolo brings over 25 years of experience to this role with a rich background in leadership positions across the humanitarian and development sectors. Since 2022, he served as CEO of Plan International, and there's lots more on our website. The UN Refugee Agency today said it is stepping up support to assist some 8,000 Rohingya refugees who were affected on Wednesday by landslides in the Cox's Bazar refugee settlements in Bangladesh. Initial reports suggest that seven Rohingya refugees have been killed and nearly 1,200 re refugee shelters have been destroyed or damaged, displacing some 2,000 refugees. UNHCR has mobilized teams to find shelter for those displaced as work continues to rehabilitate or fix damaged accommodation. UNHCR is urgently appealing to donors to make additional resources available as humanitarian efforts in the camps are severely hampered by acute underfunding. The agency requires $275 million this year for refugees in Bangladesh, and this has only been 25% funded. 
Regarding the question posed yesterday on personal envoy Maria Angela Holguin's plans to visit Cyprus, we wish to clarify that no visit to Cyprus is planned at the moment. She will, however, meet with the Greek Cypriot and Turkish Cypriot leaders separately outside of Cyprus in the coming weeks. Today is the International Day of Yoga. In a message, the Secretary General says that this day recognizes the ancient practice's unmatched power to deliver healing, inner peace, and physical, spiritual, and mental well-being. He has that this year's theme, Yoga for Self and Society, reminds us of yoga's important role in enhancing people's lives and the wider community. And today is also the International Day of Celebration of the Solstice. Sunday is United Nations Public Service Day. In his message for the day, the Secretary General salutes the women and men around the world who have dedicated their lives to the highest possible calling, public service. He knows that public servants are the foundation, public servants are the foundation of communities large and small around the world, providing health care, teaching young people, building and maintaining vital infrastructure, ensuring safety, and serving and protecting the most vulnerable. And Sunday is also International Widows' Day. The UN notes that for many women around the world, the devastating loss of a partner is magnified by a long-term fight for their basic rights and dignity. Despite there being over 258 million widows around the world, widows have historically been left unseen, unsupported, and unmeasured in our societies. And last, uh, I wanted to let you know that on Monday at 12 p.m. in this very room, there will be a press briefing by the Secretary General of the United Nations on UN Global Principles on Information Integrity. This will be in place of the regular noon briefing, and uh, you should have received uh, embargoed materials uh, that will be uh, launched on that day. Uh, are there? Yeah. Are, are there any questions for me? Yes, Edie. Hopefully, he's going to be go back to his office soon. Uh, can, 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 you, can, you, can, can you please, please mute? Thank you. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you, Farhan. Um, what? Can you what? tell us? Can you tell us what's happening um, with the um, road from Karim Sholam to um, the main north-south road? Has any? UN convoy been able to navigate that road, um, or are you still um, in talks and negotiations with Israeli authorities? Uh, we still are. Uh, I, as I just pointed out, we have not been able to pick up supplies from Karim Shalom Crossing since the 18th of June. So uh, uh, today is the 21st, so the last three days we haven't been able to do it. Uh, we are working to address the lack of public order and safety and uh, other impediments uh, that have been affecting travel from Kerem Shalom, including involving the Saladin Road. And we understand that um, a lot of cargo has been um, delivered via the U.S. pier and is now on the beach, apparently. Um, is the UN involved in any way at all with that cargo? At this stage, uh, there's, uh, uh, as you know, the World Food Program handles the logistics of the floating dock. And uh, until uh, security concerns are addressed, they remain willing to help, but, uh, but we're not in a position uh, to uh, resume uh, our activities there at this point. And I assume by that statement that there is still no update on the security review. The update is that the review is going. Uh, but one of the things that I want to take seriously, and I think we might have more to say about this in the days to come, is that there have been, even in recent days, uh, fairly close calls uh, involving UN personnel. Uh, earlier today, I, I, I've uh, heard a report that uh, World Food Program uh, personnel were carrying out activities near Karim Shalom, and uh, there was IDF tank fire about uh, 40 meters uh, away from that position. So this is something we're looking at. Uh, we're trying to see what happened there, and but we take this very seriously. Uh, Deshi. Okay, it works now. Yeah, uh, a follow up on Edie's question on the floating dock. Uh, you said you said you're uh, the WFP. They're constantly doing this security assessment. Uh, 
I'm just wondering because you gave well, an example. Uh, the, the security assessment is by our security colleagues, yeah, by yeah, the Department right, of okay. Safety and Security. Because you just gave me uh, gave us an example of uh, the the situation in Karim Shalom. So is that security assessment cover the whole Gaza Strip or just the the the, the road in the the floating dock? Well, obviously, our security people assess security throughout uh, Gaza, as as they do everywhere where we operate. But uh, for the purposes of activity at the floating dock, we're, we're talking about se the security situation involving yes. the floating dock in that perimeter. So, so can, you, can you remind us, what is the major concern? It's, it's the neutrality, the IDF and, and Hamas crossfire, or it's the, the, the unruling people who might self-deliver those, those, those uh, aids? Well, th there's a number of concerns, but the basic one is uh, to preserve the neutrality and independence of our operations so that, uh, so that the safety of our workers on the ground can be ensured. Okay, uh, another question on Afghanistan. Oh, uh, b before you proceed, yeah. I just wanted to okay. let everyone know, uh, apparently the Security Council meeting on Afghanistan has ended, consultations have been canceled, so I believe uh, uh, Rosa Utenbaeva will soon be going to the stakeout. So this might be a good time to ask questions quickly, wrap this up, and then we can all head that way. Right. Uh, Two years ago, there are se there are seven billion U.S. dollars frozen by U.S. government on the Afghanistan uh, the Federal Reserve. D does the Secretary General still ur does the Secretary General urge U.S. to release that fund? Because today, uh, in the Security Council discussion, obviously seven billion is quite a big number for for the economy there. Well, uh, obviously, this is something that uh, the members of the Security Council themselves have been uh, discussing. We expect them to continue those discussions as well what as the, the parties in the, in What is Doha. the position from the Secretary General? Ultimately, the Secretary General believes that the money of the Afghan people should be used by the Afghan people. So there should be some framework where that, where that can happen. Uh, obviously, th that is something that remains under discussion. Uh, Amelie and then, uh, and then uh, Celia. Okay, uh, Celia. Thank you, Farhan. Uh, I'd like to know why the UN has not been talking about what is going on right now with Burkina Faso, where a situation that so many people died is a burnt or their head taken off. Or I did not hear the Secretary General being deeply concerned about it. Why? Well, we have been deeply concerned about the situation in Burkina Faso ever since the uh, unconstitutional transfer of power there, and you heard what we had to say at that time. Those concerns remain, and we uh, continue to be in contact with our partners in the region. Uh, as I just mentioned, uh, there is uh, a mission uh, that visited Mali today that was headed by Abdullah Mardai and Yakub El Hilo, and that mission will be traveling uh, shortly to Burkina Faso as, as well. But you're talking every single I don't hear people talking about what is going on in Africa. Not really, and not in Burkina Faso. Uh, well, you, you've heard what I had to say just now, and, and we'll continue to talk about these. Obviously, we don't talk about everything in our opening remarks, but, uh, but certainly our con that doesn't mean that our concerns about uh, places that we have uh, been talking about in the past do not continue. Uh, Bissain, and then Abdul Hamid, and then we'll try to wrap up uh, so that we can do the stakeout. Uh, just a quick question. There have uh, been reports about the uh, treatment of Palestinians who have been uh, detained and uh, abducted from Gaza and the uh, Sidi Tayman uh, uh, prison, uh, secret prison. And I mean, just yesterday there was a video of a young man who was released who seemed in total shock that has been going viral and has been reported. Is this something that the UN is looking into? Have you been in contact with the Israelis and investigation? I mean, any effort to investigate what's actually happening there? Well, we don't, we don't have a, an investigative mandate regarding the prisons. However, as you know, our, uh, we do have human rights um, uh, uh, workers who are dealing uh, with this issue, uh, uh, with all of our various concerns, including the many concerns that we've uh, expressed repeatedly about the prison system and about uh, the system of detention of Palestinian prisoners. And uh, those concerns remain, and that uh, continues to be a, a topic of interest for the Human Rights Office. Uh, Abdel Hamid?
Hello? Uh, can, 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 can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yes. we got it. Great. Do you have a reaction to the recognition of Armenia of the state of Palestine? What did you say? Sorry? Armenia recognized the state of Palestine this morning. Do you have any comment on that? Uh, these are actions taken bilaterally by member states, and, that, and that's something to which, uh, which they're entitled to take. Yeah. My second question, uh, in the last 24 hours in the refugee camp of Mawasi in Rafah, 24 Palestinians were killed, 47 were wounded. Yesterday, two Palestinians were assassinated in the city of Kalkilia in the West Bank. Why killing Palestinians now make no news? Uh, I believe it does make news. It's being reported widely. We ourselves continue to account for these in all of our periodic reporting. And you heard that the Secretary General made remarks about uh, the situation in Gaza in his, uh, in his uh, response to questions from reporters just an hour ago. I did, yeah. Yeah, uh, what about Thor Winston? Where is he? Still in the American Colony Hotel? Does he go out and talk to see what's going on? Mr. Venisland, as, as you know, uh, uh, engages in uh, diplomatic uh, exchanges with all of the parties on the ground, and he's doing what he can uh, to uh, bring, his, uh, bring about a return to stability as soon as, as possible. Thank and with you. that, uh, I wish you all a good afternoon. The Secretary General will see you on Monday, and let's head to the stakeout.